Um, this budget today delivers a little mixed bag for public sector workers. There are some really positive developments and there are also some lost opportunities. Uh, we really welcome the announcement today of additional staff for WorkSafe. That will support WorkSafe to implement new work health and safety laws that will benefit all Western Australians. We welcome increased investment in regulatory agencies and staffing for those agencies to work through industry applications for approval. And we also welcome the end to the government's public sector wages policy. We've had five years of our public sector wages policy, $1,000 per year. It has suppressed wages in Western Australia and today has seen a welcome end to that policy. We look forward to the review that will be undertaken with government of that policy. We look forward to robust discussions that will result in a wages policy that delivers genuine wages growth in Western Australia and genuine uh, bargaining for Australian workers, Western Australian workers. That's a conversation for us and our members and the government, but ultimately what we want is to see real wages growth in Western Australia, real, real wages growth. Um, we've seen some wage suppression across the state, and Western Australia, even though it's supporting the Australian economy um, right now, is seeing some of the lowest, lowest wages growth in the country, so clearly that needs to change. Is it significantly higher than the rate of inflation? No, it's not. Uh, so for many, many Western Australian workers, the pay increases that they've been receiving have been well below the cost of living, um, and that needs to change. We know that there's a lot of pressure in the labour market, um, that there are some agencies that are certainly are finding it very difficult to staff uh, the work that they do, and I think that will only increase if this matter is not addressed. Um, can I also just say, um, as well as um, welcoming investment um, in certain areas and welcoming, welcoming some change, I just want to know that there are some lost opportunities uh, in, this, in this year's budget. Um, there's certainly lost opportunities for investment in areas like child protection in Western Australia. Um, in, the, in the budget papers, uh, what we've seen is no change from the typical funding that we receive for child protection. It's the maintenance of the same old uh, cost of demand model uh, that has resulted in child protection being woefully underfunded. That model is woefully inadequate and, and continues to put the, the child protection system under immense pressure. We know that Children right now in Western Australia, there are close to 900 children um, and families that do not have their cases allocated to a case worker. So their cases are so serious that they need an open case with child protection, but they cannot be allocated to a case worker because there simply aren't enough staff. We know that there are case workers that are stretched to the limit, that are carrying too many cases that are unsafe and they're burning out and they're leaving. We are at a point with our child protection system where something big things to happen for that to change. I'd like now to just introduce you to Mel, who is a child protection uh, delegate of the CPSU CSA, uh, and to just relate some of her experiences to you. So before I start, I just need to say that I make these comments in a personal, personal capacity. My statements are not to be taken as an official comment on behalf of any government or department. My name's Mel, and I'm a child protection worker. I work with some of the most dedicated and compassionate people in this state. People whose sole desire is to provide every child and every family in this state the safety and the support that they need. What I see at a day-to-day -day level are colleagues that are burning out, colleagues that are leaving to find employment elsewhere, and an ability to in, an inability to fill the positions we have available because it's hard to get any staff at the level of funding and resources we have at the moment. What that means going forward is that the children and the families of this state aren't receiving best practice in child protection and they're certainly not receiving the kind of practice and case management that they deserve. To make a change here, what we need to see is an increase in funding, an increase in staffing so that we can retain our staff, so that we can stop our staff that we have from burning out and so that we can continue to provide every single child and every single family in this state the safety and the support that they deserve. Thank you.